tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Satnam everyone, it's Sunday again here in Manila, Philippines and I'm very happy to share with everyone that today we're talking about past life regression, ascension healing, and the power of crystals. And we have a very special guest today, my colleague, Reverend Dr. Yolanda Dukes. And we'll talk more about that you're actually the magic that you've been waiting for. If you will understand the dynamics behind metaphysics, science, spirituality, consciousness, the law of attraction, the power of meditation, the power of hypnosis, affirmation, all those things that are actually related to the ever-evolving field and study of metaphysics. And I'm so happy because today our guest is a mystical research and she has actually a wide list of background. She has an Associate of Arts in Paralegal Studies and a Bachelor of Science in Legal Studies. And she also ha has a Bachelor's of Metaphysical Science in Metaphysics, a Master's... Friend Reg, it's so good to see you. Yes, it's so good to see you. It's been a year since we last talked. And yes. I, it, it's been amazing. I've noticed that you've done a lot of upgrades in your website and even in your work now. So congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. And I also want to thank you because, you know, this whole time during this pandemic, I've seen you help a lot of our friends everywhere. And in fact, I'm so touched because every time I I look at your page or see a common friend's Facebook and you see someone needing help, you've always been out there reaching out to people. So thank you for that. And... You know, one of the things that I wanted to ask you, since we're talking about past lives and the virtue of helpfulness, since this is something that we talk about normally in the university, serving the best in you so that you can serve the best in others, is being helpful also part of a person's past life uh, harvest that they bring into this lifetime? Of course. So we've, we've had many is because we're attempting to grow as souls. So we've been helpful and selfish so that we can see both sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It's because, yes, and I want to ask Dr. Duke, so aside from a past life, because one of the things that I read in terms of being programmed into a particular virtue, being helpful is one of the virtues that we are discussing here today, is this something that we also pick up? Let's say from your past life, you have your lifetime here. Is that something you feel that was already part of your incarnation in this lifetime? Or is it something that you picked up from your parents growing up? For me, I say it's part of my soul growth. And mm -hmm. I had a period of time where I needed to be selfish. I needed to only think about me so that I could fill my own cup. Because you can't give from an empty cup. Yes, so there's yes. nothing wrong or negative with selfish or even being isolated for periods of time. And when you fill your cup, you give because you can yes. and you give from your whole heart. It takes nothing away from me to give. So most of us, if you have brought up believing it is the almighty dollar when that is mm -hmm. further from the truth it has no value until you put an idea of what it will do so it needs you money mm -hmm. needs you it's not the other way around all it's right only it's an it's an interesting thing that you mentioned about what you're going to do with the money because some people actually just accumulate money for the sake of just saving them. And there's no particular target for the money. How do you explain it now, the phenomenon of someone who's just there to accumulate it, but not really use it for a particular project? What consciousness does the person have? Well, I can't speak on their particular consciousness, but we're all learning something. 
they're learning something by accumulating that money. I don't know what their lessons are. I'd have to speak to that person. Yes, that's true. And collectively, I love what you mentioned about how does a person feel about someone rich or wealthy? Because we here in the Philippines, for example, the collective understanding about money is that you have to work hard for it. You go to school so that you can have a lot of money. And money isn't something that you just pick up from anywhere on the streets. Although I know a lot of my friends who actually go around the streets and actually pick up tangible money. <laughs> so that particular attitude, uh, Dr. Dukes, especially you mentioned about if you have a negative attitude, please explain further why it actually affects a person's receptivity to having more money or even beginning to manifest it in the first place. It's understanding your power as a being, not my opinion about it, but the physics of it, that we are all magnetic beings and you will bring to you what those thoughts are. So if you have negative thoughts- Is that inner process for you, that inner dialogue for you about money and shifting circumstances? Where I lived before, I had a very uncomfortable bed. It was very small, but it was small and the bed was uncomfortable. But yet, I went to bed every night saying, this is the most comfortable bed I've ever had. I have the best blankets. I have the softest pillows. My sheets are wonderful. I have so much room. And then within a period of time, that's exactly when it would, would came into my reality. The perfect awesome. store, at the, the perfect bed, the perfect price, I could afford it, they could deliver it. It just happened. But it starts with a thought and it starts with a feeling and a belief that this can happen. Awesome. And I like that you talked about uh, thoughts and you talked about beliefs. And please share to our viewers how those two things are actually uh, affecting someone's life. And please simplify the definition for our viewers. So between if thoughts somebody, and beliefs. Yeah, if somebody is say for example example suffering from depression, they're mm-hmm. only focusing on negative thoughts, usually about themselves. Mm-hmm. I am this, I am that. Complete the thought. You may have felt that way, but that's not necessarily true. You Maybe you yeah. failed at something, but that doesn't mean you're going to fail at everything. Maybe you're yes. not beautiful or have the best hair or the best body, but it doesn't mean that you're worthless. You have to complete the thought. So that's that's part of pretty much what depression is. You're stuck in a loop of thoughts. And people get mm-hmm. depressed about, money, about relationships. Oh, my lover left me and I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to celebrate because they left you. Find reasons wow. to celebrate. <laughs> you know, awesome. I mean, I just, yeah, find reasons to celebrate. Even say, look, universe, you brought this to me. Whoever you call God, it doesn't matter or which name. Mm-hmm. Hey, this has happened. This feels a little bit unpleasant but I'm gonna do my part and I'm gonna celebrate because that means something great is gonna happen to me. Dr. Dukes, what do you do? For example, if it already requires uh, community engagement, for example, in my case, every time an LGBTQ topic comes up, (laughs) I know I'm already done with my issues, but every time something like that comes up, and although I'm already done with my issues, I feel some sense of social obligation not to turn my back on situations like that because number one, I know how traumatic and painful it is to go through situations that concerns LGBTQ community, especially for teenagers. It's like the only thing that fills up your head. (laughs) You're so self-conscious growing up. So I know I don't have an issue with it anymore, but when it when, you know, when it comes up, there's a part of me that gets affected by it. And I feel that I need to act, especially in the space of 
counseling and coaching the younger ones. So, what do we do? Shall we take a step back in situations like that? Well, help the ones that come to you and live your life the best of your ability. You are a shining example of someone who's come through it, who's shining her light. Just be that example. Do you know that, that you being here, you smiling, you living, you doing what you're doing is saving someone's life because you've come through it. So when they come to you, you have valuable advice, just like I'm an empath. So I tend to get a lot of young empaths as well. Oh my yeah. goodness, you're, you're happy. Oh, you managed to get through this. Yes, and you can get through it too, and I'm going to help you. That's it. Be you. Mm-hmm. If you yes, feel it's true. About helping someone help them. If you feel like, mm, you know, I, I think I might pass on this one. Maybe you're not the one that's going to help them. Maybe they yeah. need other words from another person. Yes. Yes. And I like that. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on V81 Radio, Manila.